Immigration is often used as a weapon in political campaigns for people to try to take a stand that they think is going to be successful with their constituents. Unfortunately, in the last 10 years, we've seen a, a real uptick in animosity and antipathy toward immigrants. In 2021, the USC Polarization Index found that immigration was the number one most contended topic within American politics. According to the Cato Institute, 67% of Americans agree that the legal immigration process is fairly difficult. As immigration reports flood our news sources, Americans are left to wonder what we can do to improve the immigration system. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more. Many of the trends in U.S. immigration law today can be tracked back to 1996, when the Clinton administration passed and enforced landmark immigration policy. The Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act, or IRA-IRA, was written as Division C of the Omnibus Consolidated Appropriations Act. It was written by Representative C.W. Bill Young on June 11, 1996. The House passed the bill on June 13, and the Senate passed it on July 18. President Bill Clinton signed IRA-IRA for its final approval on September 30, 1996. Its purpose was to decrease the number of undocumented immigrants in the United States. Instead, it had an inverse effect by complicating the green card and citizenship process, ultimately incentivizing immigrants to avoid a legal process altogether. Although the law introduced many new programs to the immigration system, one notably impactful facet of IRA-IRA was the three and 10 year bar rule. Before 1996, there were a limited number of ways a person could immigrate to the United States legally. An immigrant could obtain lawful status if they were married or in the immediate family of an American citizen. Additionally, immigrants could be sponsored by an employer to work for a specific firm in the United States. IRA-IRA changed the way this process worked. It introduced three and 10 year bars, which work like this. If you have been here for more than 180 days illegally, and then you voluntarily leave the United States, you are barred from coming back for three years. If you're illegally here in the United States for more than one year and you leave, then you can't come back for 10 years. The avenue through which someone originally obtains legal status is typically unavailable once someone has been out of the country for three or more years. IRA-IRA and its three and 10 year bars were put into effect because policymakers believed that strengthening the intensity of border control would decrease the number of undocumented immigrants in the U.S. Uh, the new law provides the Immigration and Naturalization Service with important new tools with which to further strengthen the nation's immigration system. In fact, many Americans still hold this value. We're going to triple the number of ICE deportation officers. The problem with some strict immigration policy, specifically the three and ten year bars, is that it disincentivizes people to seek legal status at all if they are in danger of being barred from the country. It's easier for some to continue living undocumented in the United States. Although IRA-IRA was passed in 1996, its effects are still seen today. The three and ten year bars are still in place, yet the number of undocumented immigrants in the United States has increased from 3.5 million in 1993 to 11.4 million in 2019. In our hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the population of Burmese and Zomi people has increased significantly over the last several years. Over 7,000 Zomi people from the Chen State in Myanmar have moved to Tulsa in the last five years, and now Tulsa is said to be the largest community of Zomi people in the United States. The three and 10 year bars affect our neighbors' lives. We asked our classmate, Ki, about what the immigration process was like for her and what effect the bars had on her community. Within the Burmese community in Tulsa, I really do think um, it really affect a lot of us. It's like, kind of like, you know, it's scaring us. It is important to protect these people, and all immigrants for that matter, from harm by constructing a better, reliable, and easy to navigate legalization process. Many policymakers are implementing expensive plans to further restrict immigration in the United States. Altogether, Texas is devoting $3 billion to secure our border. We suggest that before the United States spends more money on new restrictive immigration programs, we evaluate the effectiveness of current expensive immigration policy that no longer serves its purpose, such as the three and 10 year bars. Immigration has always been important in our country. And I don't mean in a political sense, I mean 
to the vibrancy, to the life, to the success of our country. It is the basis from which our country was formed, right? People coming from other places, with the exception of the native population in the United States, people immigrated from Europe, Asia, South America, Africa. The Department of Homeland Security estimates that 80% of the undocumented immigrants living in the United States have resided here for over a decade. Elimination or reform of the three and 10 year bar rule could let these people pursue the citizenship process without threat of being barred from the country. Communities across the nation, including ours in Tulsa, could thrive with the legalization of undocumented immigrants. Economies could be stimulated by more people paying taxes, receiving aid for higher education, and having access to higher paying jobs. We call our federal government to action. IRA IRA needs further provision, especially in the three and 10 year bar program. This could take us one step further in advancing the productivity of the United States by simplifying the ever so complicated immigration process.